this video, I'm just going to go over a handful of examples of evaluating definite integrals. Now, this first one um, isn't actually a definite integral because we don't have uh, any, I shouldn't put a zero there, um, because we don't have any uh, limits of integration. Um, there's no lower bound and upper bound. So in order to do this, um, all we're going to do is apply the power rule. So y squared, that'll be um, raise the power by 1, divide by that power, and then plus y to the negative 2. So negative 2 add 1 is negative 1. So plus y to the negative first divided by negative 1. Now because this is an indefinite integral, we need to add um, an integration constant c. Um, and I can simplify this second fraction because we don't um, we don't want a negative exponent. So this will be 1 over y plus c. And that's it. So I just wanted to have a quick reminder on what an indefinite integral uh, would look like here. Um, now this second example is the same integrand, but now we have um, limits of integration. So we're integrating... Um, this function from 1 to 2. So we're going to end up with uh, the same uh, expression here. So this will be y cubed divided by 3 minus 1 over y. Um, we don't need to write the plus c because um, if we did, the plus c would just can um, eventually cancel out. Um, so we're going to evaluate this from 1 to 2. Um, so we end up with uh, 2 to the third is 8 divided by 3 minus 1 half. Put all that in parentheses, and then we're going to subtract 1 cubed, which is 1 divided by 3 minus 1 over 1, which is just 1. Um, so simplifying this, um, I'm going to put these two together first. 8 thirds minus 1 third is 7 thirds, and then negative 1 half minus a negative 1. So negative 1 half plus 1 is plus one half, that's usually good enough, but if we get a, a common denominator, we'll have 14 over six plus three over six is equal to 17 over six. Okay, and I wanna do one last uh, integral that's pretty similar to these first two, but with a subtle difference. Um, so now the limits of integration go from negative one to two now, before we do anything, I'm going to rewrite this as 1 over y squared. So our, our integrand is y squared plus 1 over y squared. Now, uh, this, um, these limits of integration go from negative 1 to 2. And this integrand is not defined over this entire interval. So the interval is from negative 1 to 2. But if we say that this is f of x, f of x is undefined at 0. So because this is undefined at 0, this function is not continuous over this interval. So what we'd say is um, not integrable. Okay, so when we were talking about the fundamental theorem of calculus, we said that um, f of x had to be a continuous function over the given interval. Now, it's, some, it's easy to forget to actually check this, uh, but it is possible that we'd be given a situation like this. So um, we need to pay attention to that. Okay, for our next one, we have the integral from 1 to 2 of 2w to the 5th minus w plus 5 divided by w squared. Now, this function will not be continuous whenever the denominator is equal to 0, but our interval is only between 1 and 2, and nothing in that interval will make that denominator 0. So this, this function is continuous, so we're good to go here. Um, so I'm going to rewrite the integrand, that's a fraction, as three separate fractions. So we're going to write... 2w to the 5th divided by w squared minus w over w squared plus 5 over w squared. 
dw. Um, and the reason to do that is because it'll be easier to apply the power rule. So simplifying those fractions before I do anything, 2w to the fifth over w squared is going to be 2w cubed minus 1 over w, um, excuse me, plus uh, 5 over w squared dw. Okay, now let's apply the power rule and we can evaluate this. So 2w cubed, so raise the 3 by 1 and divide by that uh, new exponent. Um, the integral of 1 over w, uh, I don't know if we've seen this yet, but this is ln of w. Um, and the reason is because if we say the derivative of ln of x, that's 1 over x. And so because we have 1 over the variable here, the antiderivative of that is ln of w, or ln of whatever that denominator was. Um, and then we have plus, um, well this is 5 to the w, 5 w to the negative 2, so raise the negative 2 by 1, so it'll be 5 w to the negative 1 divided by negative 1. Um, and I'm going to actually rewrite this so we don't have negative exponents. Um, this will be um, 5 over um, w to the first. And then we have a minus sign there. Okay, so we're going to evaluate this from 1 to 2. So I'll input 2 into this expression first. Um, 2 over 4 is just 1 half. And then 2 to the 4th is uh, 16. So I have 16 over 2 minus ln of 2 minus 5 over 2. Close the parentheses, and then we're going to subtract... Now what happens when I input 1? So 1 to the 4th is 1 times 2 fourths. Well, just simplify that to 1 half minus ln of 1 minus 5 over 1, which is just 5. Okay, we'll do some simplification here. ln of 1 is equal to 0. Um, and then this is 8. Um, so how can we clean this up? Actually, I'm not going to write that as 8. I'll just leave it as 16 over 2 uh, because I have a negative 5 halves. So this is 11 halves minus ln of 2. And because 2 is positive, I don't need to write it in uh, absolute value anymore. So minus ln of 2, and then minus 1 half plus 5. So 11 halves minus 1 half is 10 halves, which is 5. 5 plus this 5 is 10. So we get 10 minus ln of 2. All right, next up we have the integral from 0 to pi over 3 of 2 sine theta minus 5 cosine theta d theta. Okay, so we want to take the antiderivative of 2 sine theta. Well, the derivative of cosine, let me write this over here. So derivative of uh, cosine of x is equal to negative sine of x. So the derivative of cosine gives us negative sine of x. That means the antiderivative of negative sine of x is cosine of x. So if we're taking the integral of negative sine of x, that'll leave us with cosine of x. However, we don't have negative sine of x, we have positive sine of x. So if we were to make this uh, positive here, that would mean the derivative of negative cosine of x is positive sine of x. So um, all that to say, uh, the, the antiderivative of sine theta is negative cosine theta. So we're going to say negative 2 cosine theta. And then... Um, in a similar way, we can say d dx of sine of x, which is cosine of x. So we have that right here. 
So the antiderivative of cosine is sine, and then we're multiplying that by negative 5. So this will be negative 5 sine of theta. Okay, and then we want to evaluate that from 0 to pi over 3. Okay, so we're going to say negative 2 cosine at pi over 3 is 1 half minus 5 sine at pi over 3 is 3, three over 2. Okay, and then I'm going to subtract, just going to move it down here, so negative 2 cosine of 0 is 1 minus 5 sine of 0 is 0, like this. All right, so let's do some simplification here. Um, in this first uh, set of parentheses, I'm going to have negative 2 times 1 half is negative 1 minus 5 root 3 over 2. And then minus, I have negative 2 times 1 is just negative 2. And then negative 5 times 0 is 0. So we end up with negative 1 minus negative 2. So that's plus 2. I'm going to have 1 minus 5 root 3 over 2. Okay, this integral also involves uh, trig functions. And what we need to know about this is, is there um, a derivative that we can take that will give us this? So d dx of some function, does that equal secant x tangent x? And there is, it is secant of x. So that's key for um, this inside part here, or the trig part here. Um, so when we evaluate uh, this integral, we're going to say um, the integral of 5 is 5x, or the antiderivative of 5 is 5x, I should say, minus 2 times the antiderivative of secant x tangent x. Well, that's just secant of x. And we're going to deriv um, evaluate that from pi over 6 to pi over 4. So um, what we're going to say is uh, we'll evaluate first at pi over 4. So I'm going to say 5 times pi over 4 minus, I'm going to rewrite the secant as 1 over cosine. So negative 2 over cosine of pi over 4 minus, uh, oop, uh, yeah, that's right, and then minus, evaluating at pi over 6, I have 5 times pi over 6, minus 2 over cosine pi over 6. So we have 5 pi over 4 minus 2 over cosine of pi over 4 is root 2 over 2. Um, I'm actually going to write this as a 1 over root 2. Um, those are equal to each other. Um, okay. And then minus uh, 5 pi over 6 minus 2 over cosine of pi over 6 is root 3 over 2. Okay, so... Um, what I can do is 5 pi over 4 minus 2 divided by 1 over root 2 is the same as 2 square root of 2. Uh, minus 5 pi over 6 minus uh, 2 divided by root 3 over 2 is 4 over root 3. So the one thing that we can uh, combine here are these two terms. Um, which will be uh, 15 over 12 minus 10 over 12, so 5 pi over 12, minus 2 square root 2, minus 4 over root 3. So we can leave our answer like that. Okay, and our last one involves um, exponential functions or just one exponential function, I should say. Um, I'm going to rewrite this um, 
just to remove the variable out of the denominator in each of these fractions. So 3 over e to the negative z, I'm going to write that as 3e to the positive z, minus 1 third z to the negative first power. And then uh, times dz there. Um, so evaluating each term, or taking the antiderivative of each term, 3 e to the z, the antiderivative of e to the z is just e to the z. And if you want to check that, you just say d, um, I guess, d dz of 3 e to the z. Remember, the derivative of an exponential function is just the exponential function. So in either direction that we go, whether we're taking the derivative or the antiderivative, um, those are going to be equal to each other. So 3e e to the z minus 1 third, um, the antiderivative of z to the negative 1 is ln of the absolute value of z. We're going to evaluate that from negative 20 to negative 1. Okay, um, let's see, I probably need some more room. So 3e e to the negative 1 minus 1 third, um, ln of absolute value negative 1. So in this case, it's really important that we use those absolute value bars um, because we're not going to be able to take the natural log of a negative number. So that absolute value is going to guarantee we have a, something that we can evaluate. Uh, minus, now let's evaluate at negative 20. We have 3e e to the negative 20 minus 1 third ln of absolute value of negative 20. So this first uh, uh, set of parentheses, we have 3 over e minus 1 third ln of 1. You're, if you recall, ln of 1 is equal to 0. So this whole expression goes to 0. Minus um, 3 over e to the 20th minus 1 third ln of 20. Let's, let's make it red here. All right, and then um, I don't think we can really simplify anything else. 3 over e minus 3 over e to the 20th plus 1 third ln of 20. And that's our final answer.